Right now, I'm going to show you a super easy way to use luminosity masks inside of Photoshop to really bring out the details and shadows and highlights inside your photo. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, and I've had a lot of requests for luminosity masks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to use them right now. Now, there's a couple of different ways. There's a very complex way, and I've come up with a couple of very simple ways of using them myself. So I'm going to show you these simple ways, and if you guys want to see the more in-depth, complicated way, <laughs> let me know in the comments, and I'll do that as another tutorial later. So let's do it nice and simple. So what we're going to do is open up a DNG file, and this is one of my drone shots. Here we go. So the first thing I want to do, we're in Camera Raw, by the way. And uh, if you're in Photoshop 2020, you can open it right in here. If you don't, go into Bridge, right click and choose Open as Camera Raw if you're in CS6. All right, so what we want to do is just kind of recover our shadow and highlight areas. So we're going to hit our highlights right now, recover them all the way, and we're going to open up our shadows. All right, so that's kind of flattening out the contrast, but really it's bringing out the amount of detail we have here in the sky and also it's bringing out the detail here in the shadows. Now I could just go into the exposure and lighten it up to bring out more, but it brightens the sky too much to bring back the detail in the sky. Notice it washes out this foreground. So what we're gonna do is, there's a little technique I came up with for creating luminosity masks. Okay, so we're gonna go up to our radial tool here. And with our radial filter, I'm just gonna click it off the screen and I'm doing this just to simply apply a global adjustment across the whole photo. Now we're in the radial adjustment settings. So the first thing we're gonna do is go here and we're just gonna reset local correction. So right now it's not doing anything. The important thing we wanna do is make sure it's on the outside. So that means it's essentially affecting the whole photograph. Now, in order to use this tool, you need to be using either the gradient, the adjustment brush, or the radial filter. So, you know, if you want to create a gradient off the screen, that's fine. But this is just a good way to invoke these controls because under here, you'll see we have something called range mask. All right, so what we're going to do though, is we want to brighten up this area of the photo. So why don't we take the exposure and we're going to increase the exposure and I'm going to give it a little kick of contrast. But the thing is, we don't want to be doing this in the sky because we're losing all our detail in the sky. So we only want to apply it to the shadows. And that's what luminosity masking is. Essentially, is you are masking out your image based on different tonal areas like darks and lights. So let's target this just to the darks and ignore the lights. So if we go down here under range mask, we can turn on luminance. And then what happens when we see this, you'll see range mask and you'll see on the left, we've got shadows on the right, we've got highlights. So if we only want to affect the shadows and not the highlights, let's take this highlight slider. Notice as we push it across, it's not affecting those highlight areas anymore. In fact, let's take it all the way across here and just put a small amount here. And now watch what happens when I adjust this. When I play around with this exposure now, see I'm only affecting those shadow areas. All right, let's adjust the highlight areas independently. So what we're gonna do is we wanna create another one of these. So where we're under radio filter, click new. And that means now I can grab the filter again. Of course, it's gonna be selected. And if I click and drag, we're creating an additional one. So let's just double click to reset the contrast and let's pull the exposure down. So it takes up the last settings and the only thing that I changed here before, of course, was our exposure and contrast. So now I want to target just the highlight areas and not the shadow areas. So let's go down under range mask. We're going to hit luminance. Great. So between these two triangles, this is the area that we're affecting. So let's push it all the way up. So we're just affecting that highlight area. All right. And now if we go down here and we play around for our exposure, notice now I can lower that highlight area. 
And if you feel like it's a little too broad, like you just want to hit those tones, you can target it specifically. So let's pull it down a little bit more into there and we can pull this side in. Now we can visualize a luminance map. Let's turn this on. And this red area shows us the areas that we're targeting. So this helps us get right in there and really, really target the area we want. So see what we're doing? So we just see that those pinks areas are just kind of hitting in there. Let's turn that visualization off. And now we can adjust that luminance and it's really starting to affect the sky. Great. All right, so one of the things I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go back to the main photo because we got a little carried away with our highlight and shadow recovery. And now let's pull these back just a little bit. And I'm going to keep that highlight because it's harder to recover highlights in photos than it is the shadows. So I'm going to go there. And now at any time, we can go back to our luminance masks, click on the radio filter. Remember that top one here? As we roll over, you'll see what it is. This top one here is the shadows. So if we want to put a little more blacks into those shadows, we want to increase the exposure a little bit in those shadows, we can. We can even put some color. Let's take the color temperature a little bit into the cooler in the shadows. See how we can do that? And it's only affecting those shadows now because we're working inside these luminance masks. Now remember, we create the radio filter first, then we go down and hit luminance and then set that to the shadow. Of course, we could hit any area we wanted in the photo, but we're going to focus on the shadow. And here we're going to focus on the highlight area. And once again, if I want to add some yellow color, look at this. I can warm it up just in the highlights. It's not affecting the shadow. See that? Because now we're working with these luminosity masks inside of Camera Raw. All right, and then when we're done, I might just go into here and maybe I'm just going to give it a little bit of blacks in there, maybe give it a little punch into the whites. And you can, of course, make all the adjustments you want. You can change the color temperature a little bit, but you can see how those luminance masks, we just click open image, help us target that. Now, there's another way of doing it, and I'm going to go into another photo here. Say we just want to target the sky and we're inside of Photoshop proper. Now, here's a few I made before just experimenting around. And uh, just don't worry about those right now. We'll make another one right now. So what I want to do is just hit the sky and darken that, maybe add some more color to it. So all we need to do is go up under select and hit color range. Now, color range is another way of using luminosity masks. Well. How does that work? We're using sampled colors. Well, if you click a few versions ago inside of Photoshop, we've always had our shadows and highlights, but now we have shadows, highlights, and midtones, plus we have the ability to adjust them. So we're going to hit our highlight right now and watch what happens with this range. As we adjust this range, it's only adjusting, it's selecting different areas of the highlight. So if I want to click here and we can look at the grayscale here, we can see on the image, we can adjust this range where, you know what, we're just hitting the sky. We could just hit the brightest parts of the sky or we could go further into the sky. Now, I have another technique where I figured out how to break this into 10 different zones. I'm not going to do this in this video right now, but if that's something you're interested in, you know, let me know and, and maybe I'll make another tutorial on that. But and the fuzziness here, this enables it just kind of drops it off. So it's not a very harsh transition. It kind of feathers our, uh, our transition here. So what we've essentially done is selected the highlight region. Click OK and see the highlight region is selected. So we can go in and do curves. So let's go up under the curves adjustment layer, click the adjustment layer, grab curves and go in here. And now if we want to darken it, notice it's only affecting those highlight areas. See that? So let's grab that curve and pull it down to kind of darken that sky a little bit more. And we can do a little bit more. If we go into this mask, because we use the luminance mask, it's selecting based on brightness or darkness. So if we look at this, it's selected not only the sky, but the water. So you can easily brush away the areas you don't want to include by selecting that layer mask. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is just make sure we hit the D key to reset the foreground background colors and then just click here or hit the X key to set black as the foreground or just tap here and choose black. So we want black for the foreground. And then we're gonna grab the brush tool here. Make sure we grab a nice soft edge brush. That would be the hardness turned all the way down. And now we can simply brush away with this mask selected, we can brush away the areas that we don't want to be affected. So we're going back into these bright white areas and restoring that bright white. And notice now we're just targeting that sky using the luminosity mask. What we have here right now, if I hit Alt or Option and I click on it, this is a luminosity mask. This is masking the luminance or the bright areas of the photograph. And of course, as you saw before, we could also use this on the dark areas. So as you see there, luminosity masks don't have to be that difficult or that complicated. Essentially what we're doing is we're using the tools here in Camera Raw and also inside of Photoshop to select areas braced, based on their brightness and then we can make those adjustments to just those areas without having to make a lot of selections and without having to do a lot of brush work. So we can use the bright and darks that are in the image and target those adjustments for more precise adjustments. Now, of course, there's a much more complex and technical way of creating luminosity masks. If you guys want to know that, let me know in the comments underneath. Otherwise, if you're just happy with this, we can move on to some other technique next week. So anyway, guys, if you are new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Thanks for dropping by. Um, consider hitting that subscribe button right now and turn on all those notifications. That way you'll get a new tutorial from me every week and also you'll join our notification squad. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button into dust. And don't forget, every Saturday right now, we're doing beginners tutorials and we just did one explaining resolution last Saturday and I've got another one on layers and another one on layer masks. So I've got three beginners tutorials there. So if you want those every Saturday, these regular tutorials every Tuesday and every Thursday right now, we're doing a live stream live from lockdown. That's 1 p.m. Pacific time. So why don't you join us this week? So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.